So let's move into uh, territory and like space usage. So what sort of like territory establishing behavior do you see from wild weather dragons? So from the research and from what we see, um, so, you know, a male will have his territory and within that territory he's got several females and uh, subdominant males will also be in there but they will not display so he'll display so you know typically what beardy keepers say oh you see the beard stretch um that's a that's a display of dominance and territory um they'll puff out their beard um but usually they'll do um a male dominance display is the head bob so it's the bob well like that um, that's the typical dominance display and then the beard flaring. Um, and they'll do that. They'll usually choose a prominent position where they will do that regardless whether another male's watching, whether anyone's watching. They'll just do it themselves. No one's watching. They'll do it. It's what they consistently do out in the wild for a dominant male. Um, and during the breeding season, if you get another male, um, and they'll start both doing that and then they'll come and come to a head to combat um and combat they'll start doing the head bobbing um and then they'll face off head to tail and then they'll start lunging at each other's tail trying to bite each other's tail and circling and you know the victor if he grabs the tail bites it off causing an injury or um the other one submits and then the other one will actually jump on his back and do a ride, sometimes stamp, sometimes bite on the back of the head. Um, and then the other one will then run off having his tail down and the male victor usually has his tail up. Um, so that's the usual combat ritual. It has some or none of those parts depending on the communication and and whether the other one's gone off and it's usually um usually it's the largest male from the studies it's usually the largest male that that will be the victor um and go from there so is it only males that hold territory or do females get like, a bit of territory with each other as well so the females will live in a in a overlapping patchwork within the males territory um there isn't so much um data on female combat or anything like that um there is probably there's other better people to ask um there's christopher wilde he did his phd on uh super females the temperature dependent um, sex determined females um, and they were talked to being more aggressive uh, and more male like in their behavior and their characters um, and you know in terms of what we see what we've seen in the wild I haven't generally we, we've only found a few females in an area they're generally not that close we've never seen females combat um never seen them with wounds out there in captivity i've had to euthanize injured females female to female um and yeah so I, from the study bearded dragons that are born in the area generally stay in the area so in terms of territory that's what they're they're staying in um they don't move from where they're born so. so for the males then what sort of like territory size do they establish so in our study we ca recaptured three animals all males and they were all within a hundred meters of where we caught them from where we first caught them so we do know that it's within a hundred meters um Badham's study 
found that the average was a 200 meter radius. And then with a maximum of about 800 meters range radius. Um, and once again, I'll refer to Dr. Christopher Wild now with his PhD. He actually did radio tracking of males and, um, he found that some males actually moved up to two kilometers. So, oh, so, yeah. wow. So it's, yeah. you know, so it's, and I'd have to go back over it and look at his stuff, but, um, whether it was just them moving along, but I don't think it was them moving two kilometers, but it wasn't an established territory in two kilometers. Obviously. So on the flip side to that, then courtship, what does courtship look like in the wild? So courtship is, so a female will determine when she's ready to mate. She'll um, bob her head slowly, submissive bob, and she'll actually approach the male and touch him with her tongue and then retreat away. And then he'll come up and he'll um, stand on her back like a dominance display. And then he'll bite her on the back of the head and then convert into intromission, inserting a hemipene. Um, if the female has not approached the male um, and the male actually wants to mate with the female and she's not ready and doesn't want to, the female might actually square off with the male like a full combat as well, which it can... Um, you know, obviously the male can back off or it can go to him trying to dominate her or her running off and trying to escape. So, um, that's what courtship looks like in the wild. Um, and it's somewhat, you know, the early stages of, of it are the same as combat. So, you know, a female in the position where the male's on the back biting her that doesn't want to breed. It can quickly turn into a combat situation where we did come across females with injuries, um, bite injuries in the back of the head and one arm as well, which has most likely come about from uh, a male mating at a courtship that's gone bad. So. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Beadvet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Beedivet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.